Hi everyone, this is attorney Sharif Attar from SC Law Office and I am here live to answer your immigration questions. So go ahead and put your questions in the comments and I will go ahead and answer. It can be anything that's immigration related. So I usually come with a topic uh, to talk about and so I'm going to talk about the adjustment of status process. That is a popular topic to talk about and so I'm going to go through that process but keep in mind that your questions are my priority. So as soon as your questions come in, uh, I am going to stop talking about what I'm talking about to get to answer your questions. So um, before I officially start, I want to let those of you who don't know me know I'm immigration attorney Sharif Attar. I work at ST Law Office. And if you want to learn more about me, you can go to the link in my bio and that will lead you to the website where you can learn more about me, what I do, which is I, I mainly focus on getting clients their green card and helping clients to fix their immigration status. I also help clients to come to the United States, um, whether it's on a free card. So um, you can go to the, to the website, which is in the link in my bio to learn more about me. So I'm going to get started, but go ahead and drop your questions in the comments um, as I'm talking and I will stop to answer. So the adjustment of status process, the first thing I want you to know is that means that uh, you're applying for the green card in the United States. And um, only a few, only certain individuals qualify to apply for the green card while staying in the United States. And those are usually um, those immigrants who can maintain their legal status for the entire time that they're applying for the green card. So usually that's if they have another type of long-term visa, visa that would last for years, um, and a visa that would allow them to um, adjust status to a green card holder. Um, and then there's also, uh, if you are the relative of a United States citizen, so if you're the immediate relative of a U United States citizen, um, then the good news is if you are the relative of a United States citizen, as in the spouse, the child under 21 and unmarried, or the parent of a U.S. citizen and you're here in the U.S. but you fell out of status because you overstayed your visa, then you could still apply for the green card while being in the United States as long as you qualify in other ways. Like there's no criminal record involved um, or no other disqualifying um, aspects of your background. So um, that is, those are the individuals who can adjust status, right? So we, we see uh, adjustment of status happening mostly in um, family-based immigration as well as employer-based. So if an employer is applying for you then um, and you're able to maintain your status, then that is one way to do it. Uh, but the most common way is, of course, through family uh, members. Now, as I said before, uh, specific immigrants qualify for the adjustment of status. So if you are the spouse of a green card holder, you are the, um, uh, you're the son, the adult son or daughter of a U.S. citizen and you overstayed your visa, unfortunately, you still would not qualify for to apply for your green card in the United States. But there is a way to fix this. It doesn't mean that you can't apply for the green card, but what it means is that if you're living in the United States, you would have to go to your home country to go to the interview to get the green card. But the catch-22 here is that um, you do not have if you do not have status you leave the country then you could be barred uh, for at least three years from coming back so what you have to do is stay in the united states apply for your green uh, for a waiver for forgiveness first and if that is approved then you can um, go ahead and apply for 
um, the green card go to the interview with that approved waiver and the unlawful presence that's living in the US without um, your papers will be forgiven and will not be used against you. So that is one way to fix that situation. Uh, so Dam, Dam Nola, my employer applied for the H-1B this year. Does USCIS give a receipt for my application? So there should be an acknowledgement um, provided through the system. So there's a special system that they use, a registration system. And if it is accepted, if your application is selected, then you would get a receipt. Um, otherwise, you'll get the application back. Uh, so keep uh, those questions coming. Hi there. Um, is that MC Angel one? It's nice to see you. So keep your questions coming. I am going to continue to talk about the adjustment of status process while your questions come in. So, um, so who qualifies for this forgiveness, right? So if you're living in the United States and you um, don't have your, you overstayed your visa or you cross the border without any kind of papers um, and you need to apply for this waiver before leaving, how do you do that and who qualifies? So, and the, when I say waiver, I mean forgiveness. So forgiveness, this is the basic of the application, applying for forgiveness for living in the United States without papers. So, which would allow you to go to your home country to get the green card. So um, usually this is called the um, extreme hardship waiver or the unlawful presence waiver. And you have to have a US citizen or legal permanent resident spouse or parent who will um, experience extreme hardships if you uh, are not allowed to return to the United States. So Nila and Jonah, uh, it's nice to see you. When any person remarried again after coming uh, married, after coming married through four years uh, later divorce. Um, so uh, if this is, I don't know if this is related to um, where you came, you got a green card through your spouse and then you divorce and then you want to, okay, so when can she remarry again? So there's no limit on when you can remarry, but where it may be, uh, may be problematic is if you have a spouse who is, uh, you would like to sponsor and you divorce and then um, you divorce within the five years and then you remarry this person and then you file the papers. If you do that, then they're going to look at your application with a lot more scrutiny and you're going to have to um, prove clear and convinc uh, you know, based on clear and convincing evidence that this is a real marriage. So um, that is, but they do, it doesn't stop you from remarrying, but it's what in regards to the green card is going to cause more scrutiny. But that's if you're applying for someone else. So if you don't have that situation, um, but and that is if I um, and that is if I have the situation clear. So I'm just making a, an assumption because the question. Um, so you came to the United States and then divorced four years later. Um, then yes. So. If, if you're going to marry someone who you would like to file for, then you just have to be careful, make sure that you have clear and convincing evidence, which is a high, a very high bar to meet that you're now you're now the, ma the previous marriage, you have to show the previous marriage was real as well as your next marriage. So that is also the complicated, but here's uh, the deal because it's so complicated. I urge you to get legal advice before doing anything. That way you know you go into the situation being careful and knowing exactly what to do. So now um, speaking of consultations, you can always schedule a consultation with me at 561-405-4889 you would get the scheduling coordinator 
who will um, put you on my schedule, uh, confirm your appointment, and then we can talk more about your particular circumstances and provide uh, legal advice. So keep those questions coming. I'm talking about the adjustment of status process. So you're welcome, Nil and Jonah. Um, so with the adjustment of status process, I mentioned that there are certain individuals that can apply for the green card in the United States. I do want to mention another exception, and that's if you are uh, married to a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, or you have uh, you're under 24 and you have a legal permanent resident parent or a U.S. citizen parent or you have a citizen's son or daughter who's 21 and up and you're being mistreated and you are living here without your papers, you're being subjected to mistreatment by those specific relatives, then you can apply for the green card. You may qualify to apply for the green card on your own. And in this case, you would be able to stay in the United States and um, apply for the green card. And you don't have to involve your abusive um, relative. In addition to that, there are also humanitarian based um, visas, the T visa and the U visa that eventually leads to green cards. And those do allow for adjustment of status as well. So now that we talked about who qualifies to apply for the green card in the United States, thanks Moy5157 for sharing my life. Let's talk about what that process looks like. So once you know that you qualify for the adjustment of status process, then the first is to compile all the required forms, uh, complete those forms along with the required evidence. That's very important to put the required evidence um, attached to the attach it to the application because if not, your application could be denied or um, unnecessarily delayed. So it's very important to get your evidence right. Uh, and then once that's submitted, you go through, you get the receipt notice. It's basically acknowledgement that they've received your application and it is now in line to be processed. Then you will get a couple weeks. Now we're looking at months, about three months. It used to be four to six weeks to get a, bio, a fingerprinting appointment. Now it's taking about um, three months to get that biometrics appointment. And, um, but once you do, you're able to do the background check. If you apply for a work permit along with your adjustment of status application, that will come about six to eight months later. It could come as little as four months, but the average we're seeing right now is six to eight months. And that would allow you to work and kind of, you know feel some stability while you're waiting for the green card process to be complete. And then afterwards, hopefully you don't get a request for evidence. So a request for evidence usually comes from the officer who may be reviewing your case and they maybe find that they want more information or something is missing. And if that's the case, they'll send a, a request for evidence that usually has a specific deadline. And that deadline, um, you must meet it or you could face a, a denial before you even get to the interview. So it's super important. It's not, it doesn't always uh, happen that, that you'll get that request for evidence. That's why I said, hopefully you don't. And that's why another reason is so important to attach the right evidence from the get-go to avoid the getting the request for evidence because that leads to unnecessarily delay and possibly unnecessarily deny, denial. So um, if you don't get the request for evidence, uh, everything goes smoothly, what you will get is that um, final, that notice for a final interview. And it is there that you will get um, the question. So if it's marriage-based, you will get questions about your marriage. So it's very important to prepare to make sure that you, <laughs> hi there, sexy Tommy. No, no, nothing new today. Um, but keep tuning in and I thank you for tuning in because um, who knows, maybe something will happen and I'll be the first one that can give you the good news. So um, it's always nice to see you. So, um, 
At the interview, you will get questions. The officer is going to look through your application, verify um, the information you've provided, look through your background to make sure you qualify for the green card, ask questions about your qualifying relationship with your relative. That where this usually is of concern is where is your spouse. So going into the interview, you have to make sure that you know your spouse, that you know your routine together, um, that you have an explanation for um, maybe certain circumstances, like if, if for some reason, uh, for example, if your spouse um, works out of town for more, more time than they're at home, then you definitely would want to be ready to give explanations. But usually you'll get questions that have to do with what what color curtains um, are in your your home. They'll ask you questions to see if um, it's consistent, who sleeps on what side of the bed. Um, the common questions that you'll get in the marriage based interview are usually what's your spouse's birthday? How did you meet? Uh, what's your favorite? Um, you know, what's your favorite thing to do together? So it's uh, very basic, but if the officer really wants to dig deep, um, then they will definitely, and they will separate you too. They could separate you and ask, see if you're both consistent in your answers. So that's usually uh, the point of, of the mo most anxiety and concern is that final interview. And then hopefully at the interview, the officer will usually say whether or not they recommend um, approval or they're going to for review it further or whether they deny it. So um, you will get your decision there. Hopefully it's an approval. Now, this is something I can help you with. I represent my clients through the entire process. Uh, I even attend the interview. So, um, you know, it's it is it is nice to have an attorney involved in your case to, to make sure everything goes smoothly. Uh, so user 686, so if you are undocumented and live in the US for five years and don't have someone to sponsor you. So in that case, it would really take a more in-depth analysis to see if you have experienced other circumstances that would allow you to get a um, to get a green card or not necessarily a green card, but to get a, a, a form of status. So, for example, victims of um, crime, victims of um, trafficking, or if you fear going back to your country uh, because you will be persecuted, so threatened, attacked, your life would be in danger. These could be a basis um, to get status in the United States, even if you don't have somebody. So million two nine nine. How long does it take to get a receipt number when you mail your expedite reentry permit? So it um, it all depends on the, what I would recommend that you do is go to the USCIS.gov website and um, look up the processing times. Now you said you mailed an expedite, uh, an expedited request. So, um, you know, it could be um, shorter. It would definitely be shorter than the period of time that you see. However, I would, it just depends on your circumstances, what the basis of the expedite request is and how fast the office can get to your request. So what you should do is go to USCIS.gov and look up case processing times. If you look up the form and um, you look up the service center that's processing your application, you'll be able to get an idea. So keep those questions coming. I want to see those questions. So I am finished talking about the topic of adjustment of status process. Um, and but as I said before, your questions are my priority. So I am here to answer your questions. Um, so drop them in the comments. I uh, want to let you know that I am here every day. So um, I'm here every day. So if you would like to, um, to you know, follow me and you could get notice that I am live and that would uh, be able to prompt you to join me and then you could ask your question. 
So a million two nine nine. It's been two weeks and I haven't gotten any mail from them. So yes. Yeah, so sometimes the expedite you want to follow up by phone as well. So I don't know if you have if you have submitted your request, your expedite request by mail or by phone. But give them a call and check up on the status and let them know that you have an urgent issue and um, it's been two weeks. So, so user 686, how can I apply? Um, and it depends on what you qualify for. So the, it all depends on what, um, what I would suggest if you really do want to see if you qualify for something you can give me a call at 561-405-4889 and go ahead and um, schedule a consultation with me and let's talk about everything you've been through to see if you qualify for to apply for um, status here in the United States. Um, and, that, and then I would be able, if you do qualify for something, then I can tell you how you can apply. Uh, for that benefit, but that is a very broad question and it would take a very long time um, to, to tell you every single option. So go ahead and keep your welcome million 299 and thank you for following me. So um, I am here every day and um, I really come to answer your questions. I am going to close out. Um, if, you know, on my end, it the questions are very delayed. So if your question didn't come across yet to me, please forgive me and you hold on to your question and then come on, follow me and then come on when you see me go live and then drop your questions as soon as you see me. That way I can answer your question then. So it's always nice to see you all, always nice to close out the day with you. I will see you tomorrow. And um, you know, I am on here between six and as late as 10. So um, you know, follow me and you'll get noticed when I'm live and then you can join me. It's always a pleasure to see you all. All right, have a good night guys, bye.